Welcome back to the Healthy Mind Podcast. And we're gonna talk about today another important topic that comes to my practice. And there's not a week that goes by that I see a patient. So I wanna provide for you some information how I tackle a patient who presents with brain fog. So let me get right into it and let me just talk to you about Alice. So Alice saw me two days ago and it's fresh in my memory and her history is very similar to a lot of my patients and again, each patient is different as far as their individualized approach. So I'm just gonna talk about Alice and then there'll be some generalizations. Alice is 50. She comes into the office telling me that she just feels like her memory is off. She's losing her memory. She's a realtor. She's highly functional. She works full time. She also takes care of her kids. But over the last few months, she's noticed that she's feeling off. She's not sharp. She has difficulty concentrating. She says, I feel foggy. She tells me that her primary care doctor checked her thyroid function testing, did a neurological examination through a primary care doctor and all came back normal. All of her other blood work came back normal. She insisted that something just does not feel right. There's something wrong. I can't focus. I'm forgetting simple things. My short-term memory's off. I feel that I'm forgetful. This is a common story. And today we're going to break down what brain fog actually is and what parts of the brain are involved and how I approach a patient with brain fog. Remember, how I approach most of my patients is through the five pillars of health, right? So the first foundation of the pillar of health is brain health. It's the healthy mind, it's emotional health. That's the foundation. Pillar number two is diet and nutrition. Pillar number three is exercise. Pillar number four is sleep. And pillar number five is physical health and longevity. Brain fog is not just about memory. It touches every single pillar. And that's why we need a full system approach to clear it. So brain fog is not a diagnosis. It's a symptom. It's a description. So when someone a patient comes in with brain fog, I place that in the box all the way below because that's a symptom that the patient is feeling. So now we got to go to the box above that and the box above that to really peel and figure out what is causing the brain fog. It's a non-specific symptom. It can mean so many different things. First thing I ask my patient is what does brain fog mean to you? What are you feeling when you feel that you have brain fog? Well, what she tells me was that I can't concentrate. I feel forgetful. I'm overwhelmed. I am not clear. See, these are very important words that the patient is telling me. This points to the part of the brain called the prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for attention, working memory, task specific switching, and even decision making. Some aspects even of the limbic system, like the emotional regulation and fatigue can also be involved. So brain fog is very nonspecific. It's a cognitive symptom. It's not a diagnosis. And it can range from difficulty concentrating, impaired short-term memory, feeling confused, mental fatigue, feeling what they call psychomotor slowing or cognitive processing slowness and difficulty with communication, understanding its mechanism and differential diagnosis, including neurotransmitters and hormonal pathways help us provide a clearer clinical approach. So what are the neurological manifestations of brain fog? Before we get into the emotional health, we're gonna break down how we localize brain fog. So now we localize it to a symptom. And now above that, we're going to take a look at what is the neurologist now thinking by the history and asking more questions. So the first mechanism of brain fog is prefrontal cortex dysfunction. So like I talked about that prefrontal cortex, that CEO, that front part of the brain, which is responsible for working memory, attention, decision-making and multitasking is so important. And the dysfunction of this area, particularly the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex tends to impair what we call executive functions, which causes forgetfulness, difficulty concentrating and mental fatigue. Now working memory is governed by the prefrontal cortex. It allows this temporary storage and manipulation of information. We're going to really discuss a little bit more about working memory. It's crucial for attention and cognitive clarity. So dysfunction impairs media recall and multitasking ability. The second is this limbic system dysregulation. Brain fog also involves the limbic system, that emotional brain. So emotional states of depression, anxiety can interfere, and that can also cause the amygdala to be hyperactive, which during stressful situations, it can disrupt 
emotional arousal and cause attention and concentration difficulties. Right next to the amygdala is the hippocampus, which is the memory center. So when those two areas of the temporal lobe can be involved, it could affect memory consolidation. So the processing of memory, retrieval, and cognitive clarity can be all part of this dysregulation or dysfunction. Even neuroinflammation, there are certain papers and patients that develop infections like post-COVID infections, Lyme's disease, or any type of infection where you have this release of cytokines that cross the blood-brain barrier can disrupt plasticity and neurotransmitter balance. And then you can get into what they call metabolic and mitochondrial dysfunction, which can lead to fatigue and cognitive processing difficulty. So as a neurologist, you need to take a very comprehensive history and examination. You want to hear about the patient and maybe uh, talk about other exposures to viruses, to history of thyroid diseases or disorders. So you can really kind of funnel the patient into possibly a metabolic or a structural cause of their symptoms. So this is why we add laboratory testing, which includes vitamin B. There are vitamin B deficiencies that can be associated with cognitive slow processing. There are autoimmune conditions that can affect brain fog as well, or our memory, which includes lupus. There are other causes of conditions like hormonal conditions such as estrogen and progesterone and testosterone, and even cortisol based on hyperactive sympathetic nervous system that could affect amygdala and the hippocampus and the prefrontal cortex. So this is where we get into taking a history, getting a comprehensive laboratory testing, and for the appropriate patient, order an MRI, functional imaging, and doing a cognitive examination. This patient's examination was normal. Her cognitive examination, which we performed a full scene examination and a MOCA was normal. We did a brainwave test called an electroencephalogram in the office that was normal as well. And we recommended an MRI of the brain and that came back normal as well. So we have a normal neurological examination, normal imaging and normal laboratory testing. So let's go into pillar number one. So now we're gonna break it in. Pillar number one is that foundation. This is where we're going to spend most of our time because this is where if we change the mindset, if we work on the emotional health, if we take a look at the patient and see what is causing the overwhelming feeling, the brain fog, then we're not just treating the symptom, we're going to treat the foundation and the cause. Mindset is overwhelmed. She's feeling foggy. She's juggling work. She's parenting. She's has unresolved stressors. She even was diagnosed in the past with depression and therapy didn't help her. We're not diving deep into trauma in this episode, but we're understanding this, that unprocessed emotions live in the nervous system. And when you're overwhelmed, your brain becomes a task manager with too many tabs open. We're gonna talk about that powerful metaphor because I like to teach my patients and all of you that metaphors will allow you to grasp this symptom and understand what it means by brain fog and we can tackle it because through education and awareness you're going to be able to understand what brain fog really is so my metaphor that i gave her is that your brain is like a windows task manager you've got programs running in the background the worries the to-do list the parenting uh, life at home work responsibilities decision making and your working memory is maxed out so the solution isn't just to ignore it it's to bring awareness to it and start closing all those loops with mindfulness intention and curiosity so that's how we begin our shifting from brainful to mindful now brainful remember we're stuck in those loops in the brain we want to become mindful we want to be the author we want to be able to shift and take you out of brain and understand how to use the process of mindfulness into noticing remember we're not numbing we're noticing so let's talk about that task manager and that computer memory metaphor so you imagine your brain as a computer system your prefrontal cortex is like your computer's uh, random uh, access memory or what we call ram and it's responsible for holding and processing this temporary information quickly with efficiency and then when you open up that task manager you know you could see that there's a lot of tasks all open right there's all these applications and these browsers and they're all open simultaneously so that system gets overwhelmed what happens to the computer the performance slows down and you may even freeze. So similarly, when you feel emotionally overwhelmed and your brain's task manager, that prefrontal cortex becomes overloaded. Instead of smoothly processing tasks one by one, your brain struggles under the weight of too much information, 
too many demands and heightened emotional stress. Just as the computer slows down to the insufficient memory resources, your brain experiences what? Cognitive sluggishness, forgetfulness, and impaired concentration. Those are the symptoms of brain fog. So in this state, that brain executive function and that working memory, those critical resources for daily cognitive tasks become severely taxed. They become emotionally overwhelmed. They activate the stress pathways through the amygdala and through different structures of the brain, and they elevate cortisol. They drain dopamine and the serotonin reserves, and they impair the system's efficiency. So what's the result again? Cognitive processing becomes slower. It becomes less accurate and increases prone to error. And this is why you misplace things. This is why you become forgetfulness. This is why you make foolish errors because your brain is overwhelmed and all of those tabs are open. So what do you do? You want to clear RAM. You need to systemically close unnecessary cognitive and emotional tasks by managing stress, reducing cognitive load, and prioritizing effectively and allowing yourself to reboot through rest and relaxation. Only then your brain can return to clarity, function, coherence, and performance. Pillar number two, diet and nutrition. I asked her about her diet and she said, I watch what I eat, but I'm not strict. That's not enough. When you're dealing with brain fog, you really need to look at foods because processed foods, refined sugars, if you're vegan and you're not getting B12 or the vitamin B supplementation necessary, if you're having inflammation and your omega-3s are low and your omega-6s are high, that is a recipe for more inflammation. Dehydration. Food sensitivities like gluten, excessive alcohol, and caffeine, that all could interfere with your processing of your brain. So we want to shift to anti-inflammatory, brain-optimizing diet, high in whole foods, healthy fats, hydration, and nutrients, which include B12, omega-3, magnesium, and iron that support focus. How about number three, exercise. The patient does enjoy exercise, but she does not adhere to her regimen. She enjoys Pilates. So I told her movement is mental clarity. What does exercise and movement do? It increases blood flow to the brain. It boosts dopamine and serotonin. It enhances BDNF, a brain growth hormone. So regular movement decreases stress hormone. It reboots the brain circuits responsible for mood and memory. Even a 10 minute daily walk can reduce fog and improve energy. Pillar number four, sleep. She sleeps six hours and wakes up tired. That's a red flag. Sleep is when the brain's glymphatic system clears waste products and rebalances neurotransmitters. Poor sleep leads to accumulated brain fog and fatigue, which shows up as sluggish thinking, so low mood and forgetfulness. So I recommend, which I recommended frequently, is fix sleep and wake schedules. No screen time like 60 minutes before bed cool room temperature, no caffeine after noon, light exposure early during the day. And remember, sleep is when your brain cleanses. And how about pillar number five is physical health and longevity. It is the result of all those four pillars. And remember, brain fog is a symptom. It's what the patient feels. It's authentic. It's real. But if I break it down and I educate the patient, pillar one, two, three, and four, it leads to pillar number five. So she's independent but she's tired, she's functioning, but she's not thriving. Her posture, when you see her facial expressions, her body language tells me that there's more. Her body was holding the tension of unprocessed thoughts. This is where the mind and body are one. You can't treat cognitive symptoms without addressing physical, emotional, and behavioral inputs. She doesn't need more tests. She needs awareness, structure, movement, nutrition, and sleep. I also introduced to her another metaphor called the anti-fog system. It's not a product, it's a lifestyle alignment. It's when all five pillars work in alignment, in synergy, and in coherence, where your mental clarity improves. So what did I prescribe for her? I prescribed for her awareness, I education. I told her you're not broken, you're buffering. Your brain is telling you you're overwhelmed. And now we need to teach you how to clear the space again. Brain fog is reversible. You don't need a diagnosis, you need a strategy here. Remember, brain fog, not a diagnosis, you need a strategy. So what's the strategy? Close those mental tabs, reclaim your clarity, start your, with your mindset, and rest will follow. If this resonates with you, please subscribe and share comments below. What's 
causing brain fog. Have you noticed anything specific that makes you feel that your mind is not right or you feel foggy or feel slow? Please click uh, share if you want to share to someone or it resonates with somebody that needs help and know that this information will help them. Thank you very much. Thank you.